Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, and you guys know by now, this is a show where I'm kind of shining the spotlight on other people that are in our community, in our fandom, uh, or friends of the channel. People have had me on their show before, and now I want to try to return the favor. And that is the case today uh, here, where I have my friend Wes from Thinking Critical. Wes, thank you so much for being here today, dude. Well, thanks for having me, buddy. I'm glad you finally had a, a found a spot for me on the channel. I've been waiting for this for months now <laughs> i you know and it's because of you that i i really wanted to do something like this uh, on a consistent basis and after my interview with ben pronsky who does the voice of venom after it went so well with this setup that i have uh, recording the audio of us talking it went so well that i was like okay i'm gonna do it like wes inspired me i gotta do it so you are in a roundabout way part creator of this show so everyone give this guy some credit and uh and you take the compliment wes well, thank you very much. It, it feels good to be wanted and, and uh, appreciated, and I'm glad that I could help uh, maybe evolve your channel and, and get some new, more exciting content going. Hey, I and I hope so too, man. I appreciate it, and uh, I do want to ask. Um, you know, let's let's we'll start kind of at the beginning here. Tell people a little bit about yourself, and maybe give a plug on your what your social media links are and your YouTube channel is. So my name is Wes. I am a comic book YouTuber, and uh, you know I do delve into some pop culture, like Disney movies, kind of stuff like like that. But it's mostly, I would say, 90, 95 percent comic book related content on Thinking Critical YouTube, which is where you can and find all my content. I've uh, been doing the YouTube game for about a, oh man, a, a year and a half now. So we've been going at it for a little while. We we've got a little bit of traction. For probably the last year, it finally got going. Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. You can definitely follow me on uh, Twitter at, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. There mostly I take uh, headlines from CBR, new, uh, Screen Rant, uh, Newsarama, but I don't know if I'll be able to use that one anymore because that site just died, looks like today. And I, I make fun of them and stuff like that and just talk about comics. And, uh, that's mostly the social media I use. I guess I, I technically uh, have a Reddit account, but I don't really do anything with it. Nice. And uh, on all those links that uh, Wes just mentioned, his uh, his Twitter account, his YouTube, those will be in the description box down below. So make sure you click on those, follow him, subscribe to him, and check out his amazing content. And uh, and he does. He has really great. Like I I think I think I was late to your channel. Like you, you like you said, you started like a year and a half ago or so. And I think I came in maybe about six or eight months ago so about halfway through your your uh, start and i think you were just talking you just had an interesting conversation with somebody you were just, just talking about something in the comic industry and it was a very calm conversation you guys were laughing and it was like a serious topic but but yet you know like because obviously the comic industry is suffering so that is a serious topic uh, especially for someone like me who loves retailers who has worked in four retail stores throughout my life and i just really gravitated to what you were saying and even though i didn't agree with every point i still was like hey i i like this guy and i like what he's doing so i waited it out like i normally do i'm like all right i'll i'll kind of bookmark this and come back to it and then if i like two or three his next two or three videos i'll subscribe and sure as anything man you hooked me right in well i'm, I'm glad you gave us the gave us the opportunity and uh, i'm glad you didn't check out the channel uh you know six months prior to that because when i first started out the content was a lot more different. It took me a long time to find my uh, my radio voice <laughs> because uh, the, at the beginning of the channel, it was all kind of scripted content. It was just me talking, and it was very monotone and mundane. And then uh, uh, basically, it evolved from there until to to where it is today, where it's mostly conversations about uh, you know a lot of news, sometimes uh, uh, more general topics, hot button issues, stuff like that. But I'm really blessed that I, I have like a network of uh, people that like collaborating with me, a couple of retailers, uh, a couple of writers, artists, things like that, and then some uh, super fans that have a lot of knowledge, and uh, they bring a lot to the table. All, really, all I have to do is set, set them up, and then they, they knock everything down. <laughs> That's when you know that you, you're doing good, because it's like, all right, I, this is the effort I put in, and then boom, the snowball's already rolling down the hill, and it's good. Um, so I do want to uh, start there, like with comic books. So you are a comic book focused YouTube channel. So where, what's like the origin story there? What pulled you into comics? Is there a specific one in general or a series of events? How did you end up becoming a big comic book fan? 
So that's pretty interesting. I actually didn't start reading comic books until my in, until I was in my 30s. So I was a huge uh, sports nut and a cinephile growing up. And uh, along the way, I would I would see comic books. Like I remember being in the hospital, and uh, my mom's friend had brought me some comic books, and, and I thought they were neat. But they, we we didn't really have them where I was uh, where I was from. I, I lived in a really small town, a little farming town. There's no no place to get comic books. So we, even though I thought they were they were cool, I couldn't really get my hands on them. So a, as I got older, eventually I joined the Air Force, which I, I was in the Air Force for 20 years. I'm retired, and. Uh, there are a lot of comic book readers in the military. I, obviously, I didn't know that going in. I, I joined when I was 18. So I, I have a lot of comic book readers always bringing like, graphic novels and stuff and showing me because they knew I liked movies. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, Blade, remember that one popping off? You know, in the uh, Was that the late 90s? Yeah, yeah the late 90s. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. And uh, so I would always talk about superhero characters, but I hadn't really read comic books. So people would bring graphic novels, and I would check them out. And I remember, like, I think the first one I ever read was actually Red Sun, which is kind of strange. It's probably not the best place to start with Superman, <laughs> but uh, but it, it was really good. I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I never never thought of Batman as a terrorist, but I was like, but it works. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, was like, so I was checking, you know, people were bringing stuff, but I never, couldn't really fully commit to the bit. I was spending a lot of money on live sporting events. I was kind of addicted to that at the time. I had... Like season tickets to Missouri football. I was going to UFC events, stuff like that. So I didn't have a lot of uh, extra income for comic books and things like that. But uh, but along the way, obviously the MCU kicked off. Being a huge cinephile, I'd always be talking about the MCU and stuff like that. So I started reading more up on the characters. I'll be like, oh wait, who's the newest character that's going to be introduced? Oh, they said they're going to uh, be doing the the uh, Winter Soldier storyline. Don't know what that is, so I'd go in, I'd read up, and I was like, "Man, this stuff all looks really great." Like, what? Well, I probably should check this out. <laughs> so I, I finally got the nerve up. You know, I finally went to a comic book shop, and it took me four times before I ever actually bought a comic book on my own. But I was, I was, I would look at this wall of comics. I just, I didn't even know where to start. Like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of comics. Yeah, it's... <laughs> like, which one am I supposed to buy? And then, you know, of course, no one would ever come talk to me. I probably didn't really speak the language at the time. But, but eventually, I finally uh, broke through my fear, willed through it, got me some uh, Green Lantern, and that was that was the beginning right there. And uh, I've been reading comic books, you know, off and on since then. I've always had comic books with me, but it really wasn't until I read Robert Venditti's Exo Manowar uh, Volumes 1, 2, and 3 that I, I knew that I was going to be a lifelong comic book reader. Yeah, we talked about that last time you had me on your show, which was uh, that the Valiant Universe really drew you in. Um, like, you, like you said, you had experience with comics and you've read some leading up to that point, but that was the biggest draw. And you even got me, uh, last time they had a, a, a sale, and I haven't read any yet, but last time Valiant had a sale, which was not too long ago, I did pick up a couple trades. Um, so I will be ready to read that stuff finally. But yeah, you you really sang high praises for that book and, and became a big Venditti fan. And then luckily that guy would go on and write Green Lantern after Jeff John. So that's pretty cool, you know, bringing those two universes together for you as well. Absolutely, yeah. Robert Venditti is interesting. He didn't start uh, reading comics till he was in his 30s either. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't know that when I when I picked up Exo Man of War, but it uh, turned out, you know, I think he was a writer. He finally started reading comic books in his, like I said, in his mid to late 30s. And uh, I don't know, I guess we had that in common. It was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be, yes. You're cosmically linked. Um and it's it's great too because like I another reason for doing the show is to talk to people and ask that question of when they got into comics because everybody has a different answer although there is some eerie similarities too like you talked about being in the hospital as a kid and your mom's friend maybe giving you a couple books I had a my friend uh, Gene who's a, a fellow aneurysm survivor like myself he also ha- was uh, in the hospital as a kid and given some of his first comics as was I uh, so <laughs> it was like it's it's weird how this this world kind of reaches out to us, uh, you know, and sometimes it takes longer for it to get a hold of us and hug us and say, Hey, I'm here, you know, come, come hang out, you know, be a comic book fan. Uh, sometimes it does take a while for, for it to, to do that, but, um, it's great to hear. So how did you 
what was the moment where you were like, okay, let's take this love for, you know, movies, because obviously you cover a couple different topics on your channel, but like, wh what was that moment where you're like, all right, let's take this love for movies, comics, uh, you know, just uh, g general media, you know, what the reporters are saying about comics and what the fans are saying and the differences there and, you know, what the creators are doing, like what, where was that boiling point where you're like, I need to create a show and talk about this. And also, let me mention uh, before I forget, thank you for your service because I grew up in a military family and uh, and I really do appreciate every person who uh, signs up and is willing to defend our country. So thank you for that as well. Well, I appreciate that. It was definitely uh, my pleasure to do so. And like I said, I had a 20 year career in the last, I don't know, 15 years of it, I was doing military intelligence. I was doing intelligence analysis uh, all over the world. You know, I was a world traveler and Intelligence analysis is actually really interesting, but there's a lot of butt pain that you have to go through just to, you know, keep your clearances up and you kind of like have to like explain what you've done like the last 10 years of your life and you have to do it every so many years. And so when I was coming up on retirement, I was talking to my wife and uh, at the time she and my son were in the Philippines and I was in Texas because I had moved, uh, moved, moved there at that point. And uh, the plan was that they were going to come and stay with me, and I was going to retire a little bit later. And I, I was like, God, I don't think I really want to be in the military anymore. You know, I'm pretty stressed out. Not, you know, us being apart. I was like, I think we can retire in the Philippines. You know, uh, you know, on my retirement check, and you know, with a little bit of extra income, and uh, and we we would be fine. So we made the decision. I was going to um, to, to retire in the Philippines, and that was a, another part of why I. Uh, I started reading comic books, or it kind of became a bigger thing because growing up, baseball was like a really big thing. That was like the thing that me and my dad had had uh, in common. We you know we'd always play baseball together, and I wanted something to have with with my son uh, to to do with him. And I, I was reading comic books, like you know, this is stuff is really good. It's a lot of good uh, lessons in here that that I uh, I think that you could learn. Like I learned through baseball with my father that I could probably uh, hand off to my son. And that, that was another big reason that I started picking up comic books. I wasn't reading them as much then, but I was like, I knew I wanted to, but it, like I said, it took Exo Man of War to really, uh, for me to understand that I was a, a comic book enthusiast, I was a comic book reader, and uh, like I've been reading comic books ever since. So when I finally got here, you know, I'd retired, uh, I'd moved to the, to the Philippines, I'm, I'm with my wife and my son, and I'm having a great time, a stay-at-home dad, it's basically a lifelong dream it's something that i wanted to do for forever really and my, my wife and i had talked about it and um but I, w I was used to working a lot i've been doing intelligence analysis for 15 years which uh takes a lot of uh, brain work it's a lot of ex explaining it's a lot of uh, digging in finding information things like that and um so i had uh, an itch that i needed to scratch after about I don't know, six or seven months of, of being here, I finally, I told my wife, I was like, I think I'm going to start a, a YouTube channel talking about comic books. And she's like, that sounds like a lot of work. Like, yeah, <laughs> but I'll do it at night. You know, are you and you, are you and the, and the boy are sleeping. Yeah. And she goes, uh, let me think about it. So a couple months later, she said I could do it. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. So that's where the channel came from. I I needed something to do that was um that was just me and it was creative, kind of the stuff that I had done when I was in the military and and uh doing a lot of research and digging into a lot of the issues that we tackle on the channel definitely is uh has allowed me to do that without me needing to or wanting to go back into the intelligence stuff that I I really don't want to do again. Yeah, and, and I gotta say, like as someone who, like who listens and watches your channel, obviously there is like there, that's what drew me in because I I watch a lot of YouTubers, but I watch a lot of them like two or three times. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll I'll it takes a lot for me. Like I'll subscribe to to friends and stuff, and I'll subscribe to other people, but I'll be honest, like I want I ingest all youtube all the time that's the, the number one source of uh my information is youtube and then uh when it comes to news stuff i usually try to get it from like uh twitter or something um but uh because of that focus like that you know like i, I it's hard for a, a channel to really pull me in every episode and and make me want to listen and watch every episode and yours is one of those and i and i so i'm kind of curious because earlier you mentioned oh thank god you didn't watch my stuff in the beginning 
because of, you know, you said you were like scripting it and monotone stuff. Like, so let's talk about that evolution. Cause I think sometimes people don't understand that you do have to change your content uh, over time and you have to evolve to some degree, which is one of the reasons, another reason that the genesis of this show was, Hey, I've talked about Venom for 500 episodes. Let's talk, uh, let's talk to other people like, uh, you know, a little bit about Venom, but mostly about them and kind of put the spotlight on them as, you know, part of this community. So what changed in your channel in your eyes? And obviously it changed for the better because you kept growing. Um, but what was, you know, where did you feel, was it a natural change or did you just one day go, this isn't working and you just did a complete 180? I, I'm just curious your thought on that. Oh, it certainly wasn't a 180. It, it, it was over time. But see, like I mentioned, I had been doing intelligence work for 15 years and part of intelligence work is briefing your information to decision makers, hmm. i.e. generals, colonels, uh, even politicians and people like that. Now, when you're briefing your information, you're not supposed to make it exciting. It's supposed to be very bare bones. This is the information that you need. You take the questions and then you respond. Like, you're not supposed to be entertaining. You're not supposed to be right. charismatic or anything like that. <laughs> so my the way I was used to communicating the information that I have derived was through briefing uh, information to, to generals and stuff. So that's kind of what I was doing on the channel. So I was getting good information out there. So I, I was certainly, um, people were enjoying that part, but it wasn't really, um, it could get very boring because like, <laughs> like I said, I was using my briefing voice, yeah, uh, which is, you know, as clear as possible and, and making sure I enunciate everything perfectly and, and things like that. And then over time, you know, when you have a start a YouTube channel, you're not really sure what you want to do. You, you want to do everything, but you got you got to limit yourself, and then you you have to kind of uh, pick and choose. You, you try different things, and then you kind of figure out along the way what you like to talk about. Uh, like I don't really like to talk about a lot of drama. I will talk about some drama on the channel that I find interesting, or if it's like a, a creator that I support or or a creator that that I particularly don't like because I don't like the way they act. I will cover that stuff, but I don't particularly find being outraged all that interesting. It it, um, it's not something I enjoy being, so uh, I don't really do the outrage stuff. So along the way, you know, it started becoming more uh, comic book reviews and then kind of news segments, and I was providing a lot of good information. But like I said, it was kind of boring. So some people were like, man, you need to spice it up or I want music in the background. I was like, I'm not putting music in the background <laughs> of my videos. You know, this, this isn't a, a, a Super Nintendo playthrough, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Um, one day, I can't remember exactly what happened, but there was a news event, and by that time, uh, Perch and I were kind of becoming friends in some uh, some private groups for YouTubers where we would talk about stuff. And I said, hey, man, um, I need to get this out fast. Would you mind just talking to with me about it? And he said, yeah, sure. And we went live on the channel, and I did the segment, and it was like 20 minutes. I'm like, man, that was a lot. Um, it was a lot easier than, than writing up a, a script that would take two hours <laughs> right, right. You know, for, for a 15-minute segment. And then uh, the feedback on it was amazing. Everyone was like, yeah, that was really good. Like, you should do more stuff like that. And then probably within four weeks, everything was like that. I was like, there's no more <laughs> scripted content on my channel. There hasn't been for a very long time. I, even the stuff that I do solo now, I, none of it is scripted. It's all um, off the cuff. I might have an outline or some notes, but that's basically it. It's it's all off the cuff. So it's it's a completely different channel, but it, it was a natural uh, evolution as I was kind of finding my voice, finding the things I was interested in, and I finally found the delivery that uh, suited me me the best. That's awesome. And well, uh, that's great. Uh, well, then, as as per that. I may still go back and listen to some older episodes, which I think I have before. I personally like that, uh, that, you know, direct information approach. I feel like uh, a lot of, you know, people who deliver stuff, they don't put a focus on the information that they're putting out. And that's what I like about you is that even though now you do it and it's a little, you know, less strict and there's there's humor there um, and, there, and there's kind of fun and banter between you and your guest. I, I like that approach for sure, but then I also um, I don't mind just an information uh, dump either. But maybe it's because also I have, grew up in a military family. But I'm, I was picturing you when you were describing 
oh yeah, I just give information. You know, I'm not, I'm not there to be entertaining. And I'm just picturing you like talking to a general and being like, hey, what's up, boss? Uh, guess what? Dude, I found these guys over in this area. What do you want to do about it, bro? You know, <laughs> and, nah. and, and it's like, yeah, that, <laughs> not. yeah, that does so not I will fly. Say this. If you go and check out the early content where I'm covering like a big subject, like maybe um, Comics Alliance or stuff like that, and you're like, well, it's a 22 minute video. There is a ton of information because if, if you put me in front of a general and you tell me to talk for 22 minutes, I will pack it full of 22 minutes worth of content that he actually needs. You can't really uh, – it's no frills. You just got to give all the information. So those are absolutely jam-packed with information. Nice. Um, and again, everyone, uh, his uh, the channel link uh, you know, and his Twitter all down in the description box so you can check out older episodes, you can check out current stuff, whatever you want to do. Please – I'm sure a lot of you, though, already follow uh, Wes and – and actually, so Wes, because we were talking earlier about how just getting to know you and, and, and meeting you and, and kind of the kind of content you create, I've been wanting to do this show for a while where I get to like, you know, it's the Parasite podcast. The Parasites are what I call the people who watched my show, uh, the Venom show, which like you said, channels evolve. I started off just doing Transformer and other content and toy reviews and none of those really stuck until I did Venom. And that's when the views started to come in more often and the subscriber count went up. And so, uh, so sometimes, yeah, it, it usually is a, a natural progression. And then I was like, all right, I'm putting all my chips in this horse. And, and now we're 500 episodes later. Um, and, uh, and, and doing this show is, is nice because what happened is like how we met, you know, I see a lot of times people will come in my comments and they'll go like, Hey bro, love your video. Check out my channel, you know, and they, and they do things like that. And it comes across very like, oh, they're just trying to plug and grow themselves, which I don't ultimately have a problem with, but I feel like there's a, a, a an etiquette, maybe an unspoken etiquette of how to maybe get someone's attention on channels. And the way we met was because I commented on your channel. So I'd love kind of your perspective on that. Like, what was it about maybe some of my comments or other people's comments that, or, or you know, you saying you're in other YouTube groups, like uh, talking to people privately and what leads to you going, I want this person on my show and I want to kind of have them involved in, in this way? Well, I can tell you the first thing about you that stood out is you had a logo <laughs> that was very distinctive. Yeah. So when you see the logo, I'll be like, oh, I remember this guy. Okay. And, you know, obviously there's a subscriber count. So, you know, once you start saying that, you know, in the comments, you're like, oh, this guy has a channel you go check it out and be like oh he he's he does a lot of venom content I was like venom's cool you know I'm, I'm reading that i like the movie or whatever but then you know when once you start having a, a, a recognition you're like oh this dude has some really good insight on this specifically um and and that's how you end up on the channel like there's a, a guy recently he's on the channel his name's gervain dargan uh -huh. he would always have really good information and perspective on marketing I'm like man this guy's good and, and we had talked a bit of uh via email because he was starting up uh, his own like comic publishing line so uh we were we were going to be doing a live stream and i was like man i should ask i should ask him if he would be on here and then when i go and i'm talking to him and we finally meet it turns out he you know he worked at milestone comics and, no. you know, he had a lot more uh, a lot more breadth of uh, knowledge about the industry than even he was letting out but you could see it in the way that he was commenting like he has a passion for this has a lot of knowledge and it was the same way with you he obviously has a passion for this i didn't know that at the time that you know you would work for um top cow and and some some other publishers and you had written your own comic book and stuff like that but it was clear that you had a lot of information and you were you were passionate about the subject so it was, at that point it's just we got to find the right time when when the subject comes available that i that i need somebody that that would fit that role and so i was like man i need to talk to that guy <laughs> and uh and yeah, and, and I, I was so grateful when, because like I said, I rarely does a YouTube channel hook me that much where I'm watching consistently their show and putting on notifications. Like I'll be honest, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of a, 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 a it's weird because it's like people go, oh, when you get in this community, you got to be very active with this community, and I'm like, yes, I agree, and I am active with my viewers, and I do watch YouTube all the time, but I watch like dumb stuff like you know like a video reaction channel sometimes or i'll watch like someone how to cook a steak or you know i just i, I watch like all kind of crap I, everything i ingest is from youtube and so i ne i rarely come back to a channel so um but i do like that I like I like that you pay attention to people in your comments that shows that you are also a fan of engagement and yeah you have you've gotten people from your comments and been like hey you know 
come on the show. Like Tavia, that's how me and Tavia met. We met in other people's comment sections. Um, and then I found out, I clicked on his name one day and saw that he had a channel that he made videos. And I'm like, oh, let's go check him out. And then I subscribed to him. And now me and him, he tags me in all of his posts all the time on Twitter. So it's a, it's, it, it is a good community, but, um, what what would you say as as you know you as a content creator what do you look for the most in other people's content that kind of draws you in now that i've explained kind of what draws me in to you definitely opposing viewpoints okay i i, I like people that uh, that aren't outrage focused that can explain their point of view that I know a lot of times is going to be different than my point of view. Also, I, I do like um, like Perch because he has a lot of insider knowledge. Uh, he has he's been in the industry for a long time as a retailer. I think that he he brings a different perspective and he he will cover news on his site on his channel that I would never cover cover on my channel. You know, because it just doesn't fit you know what what we do over here. So I, I'm able to get uh, different things from him. But I do like people that that have different. Differing uh, points of view because it, it helps me understand where other people are coming from. And I think that's one of the key points. So there's so many people that, um, like, if you don't agree with me or if we're not of the exact same, if we if we don't agree on everything, then we can we we agree on nothing, kind of thing. And I much prefer um, talking to people that I don't gr- agree with on everything because uh, you know I'm kind of hard headed. I don't agree with anybody on anything. <laughs> what it, or you know what I mean? There's always a point of disagreement with me. Sure, I'm very good at playing devil's advocate myself, and uh, but I, I do like the the group. You, like you said, sometimes you bring together people like minded people, but like minded doesn't mean always agreeing. And I love being on your show. Like you brought me on that comic episode, which I definitely felt like a fish out of water on, but I still had fun with it, which was which was cool. And then you had Jacob on there, who also felt the same way as me. But that allowed me and Jacob to bond, and then he was nice enough to have me on his show, and I've actually already recorded an episode of him on this show. Uh, and so we've built a friendship there, and then purchased someone, actually, who you've kind of turned me on to his content, and now he's another guy like you that I watch. Every time he posts, I have his notifications on, because I do, I like the conversations. And again, I'm like you, I, if I don't agree with you, chances are I'm gonna watch more of your stuff, because I just like seeing what someone thinks who I don't see eye to eye with them, especially when they're very calm about it and they're not hyperbolic or just, you know, doing it for just for entertainment, but also being honest. Like I love that stuff. It it definitely draws me into people. And, uh, and you were saying like, you know, you're, you mentioned earlier, you're like, okay, because I want to make this a little, bring it a little bit to Venom and stuff. And, uh, you know, and so Venom, the uh, speaking of different opinions, I think at first, if I'm not mistaken, were you a fan of Donny Cates' stuff? And and it, was that something we disagreed on? Or is that something we, because I know I'm very critical of the guy, and I just couldn't remember off the top of my head if, if you stood in the same boat. I think you're you're dead wrong, especially at the beginning of that run, with, when it's him and Stegman there for the first uh I don't know three story arcs. I thought that was it was really solid. There were there were a couple of weird things in there when it was like uh, the codependent relationship that he was be- building between um, Eddie and, and the symbiote. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I agree with that, but I thought I thought it was great, especially the art. Well, uh, yeah, and the, the and... Grendel and you know introduction and all. I was like, man, he's really building things out. You could tell he was doing something big. Um, yeah, no, I definitely don't have an issue with um, Ryan Segman's artwork. I do, I do like the guy, I like his stuff. Although my criticism of him is that I think he's a great artist, but he's not a great designer because I actually think Noel looks very generic. Um, uh, but, but again, like you know, that's what I like is that like you know there are people that come in my comments. Like I just put a, a one hour breakdown video up the other day where I I broke down Venom Island and how how bad I thought it was from a story standpoint, from a structure and pacing standpoint. And I did have people disagree with me. And I think sometimes people, maybe because they like my channel, some, I do, I've had someone admit this to me, they're like, oh, I'm afraid to disagree with you. And I'm like, uh, don't be. Like, I, I, yeah, there are some times where people disagree with me, but they're jerks about it, um, or they seem like they're attacking me in some way. But, uh, but if you're calm about it and you tell me why you disagree, I like that. Like, like, and I like that the book is selling well because for me as a Venom content creator, that's good for my channel. So, so I don't want the book to stop essentially. Um, I, you know, I want the book to keep going, but that's where 
I do enjoy that discourse where it's like you know, people have different opinions and, and, and feel differently about stuff. And so, you know, you, you've you liked the first couple runs that you've read. And is has there been any other exposure you've had to Venom over the years? Because I know, like you said, you got into comics a little bit later than maybe other fans who've been lifers. But I like that, too. Sometimes people will go, oh, they're new, so they don't know as much. So I don't, I don't respect their opinion. And I completely disagree. I like getting opinions of people who come in at different eras of comics because uh because you came in at an era where i was already starting to see cracks in the writing of comics and i started seeing the cracks in editorial and comics around the time uh, around of winter soldier and jeff john's green lantern like those were good books at the time but they stood out as good books because some other books were starting to fall apart and uh and so I, I don't know. I, I love your perspective. So Venom, was there any other version of Venom that you were exposed to before the Donny Kate stuff um, that you maybe liked or didn't like? So, yeah, I mean, I really, Clayton Crane is probably my favorite comic book artist, which is probably weird, but I think he's he's awesome. And he has some really great, like, Carnage and Venom stuff. So I definitely checked out that. I would say the movie was really big. Um, my, my wife uh, in... And I, you know, the town that we live in, there the closest movie theater is four and a half hours. Wow! So we don't we don't get to the movies. Otherwise, to be completely honest, my, my channel would be probably be fifty percent movies and fifty percent comic books. Right. But uh, I, I get comics. I can't get movies. So we, my wife and I, did get a date night. And we got to go see uh, Venom with Tom Hardy, and uh, it's a fun movie. It's not really a Venom movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's Venom because it's got the name on it and the character kind of looks like Venom. But other than that, you know, but I thought it was really good. My wife, when we walked out, she was like, that was really cool. I was like, well, I'd say read the comic book, but if you really <laughs> like the movie, it might not be for you. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but no, recently I've been reading Agent Venom mm-hmm. because uh, because we did the, the top, was it top five Venom stories? Yes, Venom yeah. stories of all time? Yeah. Yeah, on the channel, that was... Uh, one that you had mentioned, and they had the complete collection in uh, Comixology Unlimited, which I do have. I am, like I said, I'm in a remote location. There are no comic shops here either, but I do have a comic shop that ships to me. That's how, that's how I get my uh, my comics. So Comixology is important to me, and they had that that run in there. And I had also been reading. Oh, hey, you there? Yes. Sorry, I got I got cut off. Um, I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Um, I, what was the last thing I said? The last thing you said was um, you have a comic shop that ships stuff to you, and that's why comics knowledge is important. And then I think you're about to go into the the uh, Agent Venom run. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, because I have to read a lot of comic books via my tablet, so that that one's important to me. So I have been reading the uh, the Agent Venom run by Rick Remender, and also I've been reading the. Um, the Todd McFarlane like introduction to Venom, where they finally give his origin story. Awesome, that's great stuff. And actually, it's uh, Agent Venom is the kind of the focal point of the comics that we're talking about this season. But now that the movie got pushed back, I figured I would um, this week or, or the week of us recording this, but it'll be <laughs> where this will air in the future. So, uh, so it'll already be out. So you guys can go check it out on my channel, which is we're doing an Eddie Brock week where we're talking about some nineties uh, series, but uh, we're, then we're going to go back to agent venom and he's kind of been our focal point of this season. Cause we're going through the comics almost chronologically and I'm now rereading that stuff too, and I'm loving it. And I was I started rereading it when I was on your show, and you were asking me, you know, that was kind of the impetus of, of us doing the show together. You were like, hey, would you like to make a top five list of like or seven or whatever of of graphic novels of Venom that people have to read? And what I liked is I did that episode, and then I immediately like a day later, I was like, oh, I'll give it a day. And I went back a day later and saw the comments, and I went in there and responded almost to everybody, and I loved hearing what their lists were like some people are like oh dude you omitted this or you didn't put this in there like this mm-hmm. is you know and i love that it's like well that's the whole point is that we all have our own lists and uh but that was a fun episode to do with you and i'm glad you're liking the agent venom stuff like i think flash thompson is a be him being a you know war hero and then having this um very uh rough background of ups and downs like is very relatable i think to a lot of people and i'm glad you're enjoying it man <laughs> that's that's that sound, that's music to my ears yeah, that's a, it's a great run. It's really interesting, you know, the relationship between Flash and the Venom symbiote. And then obviously they had the handlers there who, who were kind of interfering, and you know. And uh, so Flash keeps going. He's pushing the boundary 
more and more on, on the amount of time that he's, uh, you know, he's he's with the Venom uh, symbiote, and they're kind of changing each other. And they know eventually, if he stays too long, he can't come back. So it definitely ups the stakes. And of course, he's like a he's a straight up like superhero in that one. Like he's going in there and taking out terrorists and saving people left and right. And uh, just it's just really really well done. The art's amazing. There's, not, there's nothing really bad about that whole uh, story arc, other than it not being Eddie Brock. But I, I think the Flash Thompson uh, dynamic is really interesting, and the fact that he's a um, he's a handicapped character who's only got his legs when he is with the symbiote, uh, kind of adds another kind of uh, reason why he might stay with the symbiote too long. You know, more temptation kind of thing. Right. It, it adds to that, and then also the fact that he's a recovering alcoholic. And uh, mm-hmm. and that addiction to something now he's addicted to the symbiote. It's it's really neat. Like the themes there really work, and I think that's why that run has made an impact. Because and you actually it was so great. You you shared this link and tagged me on Twitter. You were like, "Yo, dude, these guys are throwing shade. What do you think of this Venom vlog?" And it was like a uh, one of those hack websites that you and I normally make fun of. And but they actually wrote an article that said uh, Flash Thompson is a better, more heroic Venom than when Eddie Brock is with the suit. And you were like, what do you got to say about this Venom vlog? And I don't know if I surprised you, but I was like, yeah, no, that article's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you surprised me. I, I know uh, Eddie Brock's your homie. Like, that's uh, that's your favorite character. So I was like, oh, he's going to take a dump all over these guys. I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like instigating. You're like, come on, let's throw some shade at these people. Let's let's attack them. Or no, I know you didn't mean that. But, but no, yeah, I had a... When you sent me that, I start, I actually busted a gut laughing, and then I was like, wow, man, I can't wait to respond to him. I wonder what he's going to think of my response, and you were just like, oh, okay. And then there was other people that were like, yeah, I agree with this too. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Eddie is my boy, uh, but I, I the reason I like Eddie is because there's real flaws there. The thing with Flash is that deep down, like, you know, he was a bully in high school, but he kind of, him and by the set, late 70s, him and Peter started becoming friends, and so that bulliness, you know, doesn't... I don't think of Flash Thompson just as a bully. I know a lot of people, when they write the character, they put him in a movie or something. They're like, oh, he's got to be the bully of Peter Parker. And I'm like, well, most of my life growing up reading comics, I didn't know him as a bully. I knew him as someone who was a friend of Peter Parker's who ended up working for Norman Osborn. And then Norman Osborn found out that Flash was a recovering alcoholic, poured alcohol down his throat, and then crashed him into a school, uh, you know, uh, and made it look like that he was drunk driving. And that ruined Flash's life. And... Uh, and then that led him to go back into the military because he wanted structure. And then, of course, you know, he got his leg, lost his legs uh, saving his platoon. So I like the guy because a lot of the bad stuff that's happened to him hasn't really been by his doing. Um, you know, it's it's just been, you know, a little bit of bad luck maybe, but then also him just trying to do the right thing. And that's what separates him from Eddie, as I feel like Eddie wants to do the right thing but doesn't know how. And I feel like Flash does know how to do the right thing, but it just backfires on him. Um, and that's what I love. Yeah, Asian Venom is definitely more of your traditional superhero, whereas the the, the Eddie Brock Venom is is your antihero. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we're you know I, I, uh, normally I don't have these things go past you know a certain marker, so um, I do want to wrap this up. But I I am just curious, like, is there anything else that maybe we haven't discussed? Something you know that you want to talk about? Anything you want to say to the the viewers? Like any last words? Because uh, I could definitely talk to you all day and we we did have that warning at the beginning we're like we got to make sure this doesn't go for four hours uh so so uh but you know and i'll definitely try to have you on again i'm sure we're gonna you know work together at something in the future i you know at least i hope so because i admire you dude i I think you're a great guy and i I love your content and you're definitely someone i consider a friend and that's hard for me to do especially uh you know um with some of my health issues and stuff it's like you know make going out and making friends and it's it's been awesome being your friend so i'd love to give you a chance to say any last words to everybody. Well, I do appreciate the kind words. I definitely consider you a friend as well, and I really appreciate you giving me the time. I will say this. Donny Cates' uh, Venom 25 sucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I've been more disappointed in a comic book. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's up there. It's like, I was like, wow, I just spent $6 on, on uh, 75% of a recap comic. And then, like, the big reveal... I had figured out the second time that they were talking, I was like, oh, he's talking to the Avengers, clearly. Right. Yeah, it's... it's. <laughs> it's like, 
I'm 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 a little worried about the guy. I mean, I I know I, I try to stay out of the the drama side of things and the personal stuff, but I do see it. I'm aware of it because people send it to me, and it's I am a little worried about him. I, Bendis, this was happened when I was a big Bendis fan. I loved his Daredevil stuff, his Alias stuff, and then once he got on Avengers and he started from there growing into writing like four books a month and five books a month, the I noticed the the lack of care put into each issue. And I know that, like, I know Bendis is a good writer, but I never see him apply himself anymore because of dec- like a decade of of writing multiple books and phoning it in. And I know some people argue and say he's not phoning it in. That's his best. And I'm like, I know it's not, though, because I know he's a good, good, better writer. I feel the same way with Donny Cates. I feel like that guy has a lot of potential and he, he can be a really great writer. And I've seen him do it and, I, and I've liked his stuff a lot. And I don't completely hate his run. I do see potential there and he has great ideas. Like the the idea of building up a Null type character or doing this Grendel thing or tying into Thor mythology, like those are all neat things that I, I myself never would have thought of so i give him a ton of credit but i do have issues with a lot of his execution and i just don't want him to turn into a bendis because he's so up there right now and he's writing four or five books now i'm just i'm just worried about that you know from an outsider perspective because i've been through that and it it bummed me out because bendis was one of my favorite writers for a long time until he got stretched too thin now i feel like that's going to be with donnie and i'm afraid of his fans who do love him and our loyal fans I don't want them to go through that like I went through with Bendis. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So he's definitely got a lot on his plate. He's definitely taking a, little bit, a much bigger leadership role, obviously, during COVID-19, coronavirus, and everything that was going on. He was kind of one of the, the few uh, Marvel creators that was out at the forefront and getting his face and the, and the words out there for the book company, even more so than C.B. Cebulski and a lot of their, uh, well, you would consider to be their leadership. So he's an important guy at Marvel. Uh, yeah. But he definitely, he's on a little bit of a funk right now with Venom. But I will say this, his Thor, co- his Thor comic still kicks ass, so oh. what's going to do? Uh, yeah, there you go. And you're right, and you know, and I will give him that credit. He he did a lot for comic shops, and he did a lot for uh, being out there and speaking, even though he doesn't speak for Marvel, but as like a, a contractor for them and as someone who works for them, it was good to see someone say the stuff that he was saying. And, and yeah, so I, I'll always give him credit for that because – there is. I think even still right now, uh, what's going on in the world, I still see a lack of leadership from these companies, which makes me want to buy less and less of their stuff. Uh, but seeing him do that, it did spark that in me. And that's why I was like, you know what? I will pay six bucks and, and review you know, his Venom 25 now, even though I officially quit collecting the book after Absolute Carnage. He did pull me back in by some of those things he did. And uh, but now I'm back out again. But still, you know, I do appreciate what he's done. And I'm glad you said that, because to be fair to the guy, he does deserve uh, credit for doing cool things like that. You know, I will say this also with Donnie. He might be kind of like a Tom King where he's good on a miniseries and he might not be the right person for an ongoing. Because if you go and read his Thanos wins, that's awesome. I think the beginning of his uh, his Venom run is, is great. His Absolute Carnage um, uh, miniseries uh, event it was actually really fun. If if you if you didn't expect the ending to like be conclusive, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that, that kind of threw me off. So he might be somebody that's more uh, that's better on short bursts or uh, one or two story arcs rather than somebody that's that's fleshing something out for like a three or four year run. You know. Possibly. Well, I wish him the best, and I hope that he finds his stride again with Venom, because I don't want the people who are fans of his to be disappointed in his stuff. I hope they keep liking his stuff, uh, even if I don't. Uh, but uh, but that's, you know, maybe that's a conversation for that we can finish off another time. We'll check in back in on you and Donny Cates in like six months from now or something. Um, but Wes... I do appreciate your time, first of all, and I appreciate um, what you do on YouTube for the comic book industry by providing these very interesting topics and conversations. I think they're important, and I don't see a lot of people having them in a calmly manner, and I, I got to commend you. So everyone out there, please go follow Wes. Check out his YouTube channel. Check out his, uh, his Twitter. I put all those links down below. Again, Wes, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you very much, and uh, salam po, everybody. Awesome. And guys, thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.